Yeah, it's a pretty cool day today, so I'm uh, thinking I can do some welding. I got the frame loop in, but I have to weld it here. There's actually a steel slug from here to about here on each side. Uh, but I, I ended up cutting like seven inches off of the the loop to get it to where I want it. But I think I'm there. What I have to do now, you know, this luggage rack is off. It was made for a DR Suzuki. What I have to do, it fits on there perfect, but I have to bend it a little bit more so that this is parallel with this. And then there are tabs right here that are meant to mount on the fender. Well, what I'm gonna do is bend a piece of steel that fits under the fender and weld it from one side of the frame loop to the other, but have it so it fits right up in there. Then I can the luggage rack will be supported by that weight and I can rubber mount the fender with spacers between, you know, so there's no stress on the fender. All the weight will be borne by the frame. But I think I, I think I got the loop where I want it, so I think I can weld that on. I just have to bend this thing to to make sure I get it where I want it. And then I'm thinking too, I might put tabs on the back of the loop, either one tab, or I'm tempted to go with two, one on each side, that also I can rubber mount uh, to stabilize the fender, because like I say, these 500s tend to uh, shake like a wet dog. You know, if you're, like I had an idle, uh, things move around, <laughs> so they have to have a little freedom to move around. And I do have a tail light uh, license plate holder that comes out of England. Uh, what I have to do with this is, you know, it's a small tail light, but you know, it's all you need. And it has the license plate bracket, but it came chromed, so I don't want it chrome. I, I stay away from chrome. Um, you know, I use, I'm using a lot of like stainless steel and stuff, but. Uh, I have had my fill of chrome working on Harleys, everybody, everything, but it's got to be chrome. Well, I, I kind of lost interest in chrome. But that'll go back on here high enough up that I don't have, you know, that the fender can serve as a fender. And I have about um, two and three quarter inches of travel on the shock. So I should have plenty of space. And this is at the latest spring preload on the shock. So that should give me plenty of room. Because you don't want to set them up too close. Uh, that's a constant problem. Uh, especially, like, this is a 418 rear tire. And I'm probably going to go uh, to a slightly bigger tire on the back again, to get my gear ratios up higher. And I have a problem, you know, I like these, these K70s, but the problem is the K70 is only rated up to like 95 miles an hour. Well, I'm looking to go a little more than that. So I can get a K81 and I can get them in a little larger size. So I have plenty of room up here and this is with the axle all the way back. Got, you know, plenty of clearance. But I think those K81s are rated to 120. That'll give me a, a margin. But I gotta, I gotta put a little more bend. You know, I want this to be parallel with this. And I should keep the angle the same as this angle. In fact, I could, 
this isn't welded on yet. I could use that or, you know, I think I'll bring it over to my brothers to get a pipe bender so I can get the same bend as what's in here. I could use this as a template, kind of. She's all coming together. But, you know, I gotta be, I don't wanna be drilling holes in this fender. I got one hole where it mounts down below because it lined up perfect with the brake support arm. There's a bolt that goes through. That's just where it should be. And that gives me the right for the chain guard. I like where it's sitting in there, but I, like I said, I got to get this to the right curve, then bend this to the same curve as the inside of the fender so I can run the bolts through and rubber mount the fender so there's no strain on the fender at all. All the weight will be carried by the frame. The only weight the fender will be carrying will be the tail light, which isn't that much. But even then, like I say, I might put tabs of the same steel coming off of here that I could put rubber mounts in. And like on these seat bolts, you know, there I, I had went all the way through with them, welded that piece of pipe in there. Then I have it to the right size that I could put some bronze bushings in there so that I can put lock nuts on the inside bolt so these aren't bolted solid so they actually can flex a little bit uh, just to keep the tension off of the spring you know because as it goes up and down you're going to get a little movement if it's solid it can't move uh, you can break a spring I'm taking this out very carefully but like for fasteners, everything I'm using is uh, stainless. I, I have found now you can find metric stainless. Yeah, I got to get that curve. Because otherwise it's too close here. And I got to get these tabs down so they line up on the fender or a little above. But I think I can bend that that piece to match this piece. It's like a one inch difference here and I want a one inch difference here so eh, it's a good good way to line it up. He's an art. But I think that'll that's coming together. Yeah, that's a good project for today. Like I said, that frame loop is just stuck on that steel studs now. I can yank that off and then bend that to match that rack. Well, she's coming together. <laughs>